followed by the make your rain from Tyler Pursuit. They're gonna clean this fight.
they can say what they want now Cause we'll be screaming now We can be heroes everywhere we go We can have all that we ever want Swinging like Ozzy, knocking out parties Standing on top like a champion Keep your own silver, give me that gold Every spotlight, every sound bite, everybody who gave up is just a fuel for wanting him more than anybody against us. They can say what they want now. Cause we'll be screaming now, we can be. Mathis grabs the offensive rebound back to Slipka. At the top of the key for Moraboli. Inside the Mathis, that shot's good. seen that so between the coach Metters juggling Andrew Lindley with the uh, bottle flip that's impressive landing there um, hey I would like to welcome you all to our 16th annual Bushnell Athletic Awards ceremony the Iggy's tonight's awards are, are about you for you and because of you our Bushnell student athletes coaches and our teams we are here together one last time to honor all of your accomplishments this past year um, our administrators and I was speaking on, on, on behalf of our administrator and coaches. We just want to say thank you to all of you for your hard work throughout this season. I know we've still got spring sports moving forward, still going on, but obviously this is the time of the year where we have award ceremonies and we're starting to get ready for the end of the academic year, but spring sports will be continuing. Um, so one of the things, and, and I have some stuff written up here, and again, I haven't seen the highlight video, and all of a sudden it kind of changed the, kind of the, the, the tone of what I want to talk about because that reminded me why I do this. Just that reminded me why you guys play sports. In my mind, and I'm not going to lie, my mind the past two years has been clouded with COVID, just like you guys. Um, trying to manage through the past couple years where this year, I mean, it was fall sports student athletes. I think it was three days before fall camp, and all of a sudden here came masking policies again. We were ill-prepared to think in that structure that we were having to do this again. And then here we were having to manage that again. And it was harder on indoor sports than outdoor sports. But for the past nine months, 
you guys have been beyond gracious and I am so thankful for your patience and student athletes and coaches alike because I know from myself and, and Bree and Caitlin and Alexa and through coaches, I, I know we've, things have been a pain and sometimes it feels like we're the ones being a pain in the rear. Um, and it's, it's been really difficult. I am not going to lie. Like I say, administratively, watching that and being at games and being on sidelines and watching you guys compete and watching coaches coach, again, that, that's why I'm an athletic director. I did not get into this. I don't think any of, any of us as administrators got into this to try to manage a pandemic. But for two years, that's what we've been having to do. And so... Man, I just that, that just inspired me. I do want to make sure I do acknowledge our athletic training team because being led uh, by by Bree and assist, being assisted with Caitlin, and then as a student trainer with Alexa, the things that they have had to endure this year in order to still be athletic trainers and to still try to manage our teams and student athletes and be at games and all the weird hours, but that group has absolutely been resilient and I want to I want to give them a round of applause right now and and again it's been interesting because through the fall outdoor sports a little bit easier but again in, as a pain in the rear but as we got into winter sports with well with volleyball and then getting into winter sports with basketball and the things that we had to manage in the gym not only on the floor but with the crowd and different people coming and going from different states and different places in Oregon it's it's been a challenge absolutely it's been a challenge but no different than the challenge that you guys have had between the lines, okay? Your opponent has been, you know, Oregon Tech and Corbin and, and Southern Oregon and College of Idaho, and our opponent's been dealing with acronyms and pandemic management. But I think at the end of this, we've all come out winners. So I appreciate your patience. I appreciate just the grit that you guys have all shown this year and you continue to show. I know once we were done with, with winter sports, we got into spring, and then, of course, losing mask mandates. And go, it's been so refreshing going out to whether it's been baseball games, softball games, and I, you know, track meets. I know we don't have a track, but being at track meets for our, 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 our track and field student athletes and our golfers are golfing right now. They're gone. But being able to put some of this stuff behind us a little bit to move forward has just been, it's been a huge, literal breath of fresh air, not having to, uh, have to you know, have the mask mandate and everything else. So um, I am in prayer and I continue to be hopeful that we continue to take the steps forward. And I'm not talking about Bush now, I'm just talking about big picture here that hopefully we can keep this thing managed and keep it behind us. So um, nothing that any of us have ever gone through before and I hope it's nothing that any of us ever have to go, for, go through again. So. Hey, one of the things in this highlight video was awesome, so thank you Kelsey and Nick on that. But normally we get up here and we have like a moment of the year. So throughout tonight's program, there's going to be moments of the year. And so there's going to be video clips of different things that have happened. And there's more moments of the year than what we have video for, okay? Because the video isn't always there, you know? So obviously our moments of the year that we have video clips of, it's just that, things we have video clips of. I think that there's, whether it's during a game, whether it's during practice, whether it's in the locker room, whether it's in travel, whether it's, you know, at the restaurant, whatever it may be, I know you all have, this was my favorite moment of this year. You know, obviously what we have is going to be game moments, but for you, it may be something else. And I want you to take those memories and take those memories and, hey, this is all kind of the time of our lives, I'm talking to college kids, college people, college young adults, but your sport hopefully will make this even more more of a memorable opportunity that you have through your, whether it be two years, four years with us. And so live in the now, be in the moment when you're, when you're there. And again, it's not always going to be between the lines. Okay. It's not always going to be between the lines and the friendships that you have now 
the friendships will last a lifetime, okay? A lifetime. I'm sitting here, hey, I'm 51, all right? Born in 1970, okay? Some of my very, very best friends to this day, some of my very best friends to this day are from when I was at the, at the U of O and, and a part of the men's basketball program, okay? Some of my very best friends are teammates from high school, okay? And I can easily go, and there's not a whole bunch of them, and I, I've had a, I'm a pretty social guy. I've had a lot of friends over the years, but guys that I am still in contact with, they have one thing in common. They were a teammate, okay? They were a teammate. So look to your right and look to your left. Hey, there's a good chance that person you're sitting next to in 40 years, 50 years, 30 years, whatever it may be, hey, you know what? I hope you're still in good communication with them. And thank them now for being a good friend, okay? And be a good friend. Because trust me, you don't always know down the road when you get older, when all of a sudden you have to put your friend... In a, you have to give a eulogy for a friend, and I've had to do that for a teammate. One of the hardest things I've ever had to do, okay? So appreciate your teammates and be a good teammate. Beyond important, beyond important. Okay, so with that, we are... Are, do we have a moment of the year right now? There we go. I'm going to stuff off the mic. I think we have one of our moments of the year. in baseball and the first wins versus Corbin. You know what? Hey, anytime you beat your rival, that made that even better. That could have been against anybody. Hey, beat Corbin. That's even better. Hey, I'm going to bring up our first presenter tonight. This time I'd like to bring up uh, our student athletic trainer, Alexa Berry, presenting for Bushnell head athletic trainer, Bree Dixon, who's not able to be with us tonight. She is going to be presenting the Perseverance Award. So, Alexa. Hello, good evening. Um, I'm really excited to be here for representing the athletic training room. The Athletic Perseverance Award is one which goes to an athlete who excels in the face of adversity. To persevere means doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. To overcome an injury requires strength of character and dedication. It is the true test of resilience. This year's recipient embodies each of these qualities as an inspiration to others and a true perseverance. Sophia Castillo. We're gonna do a picture when she comes up, we'll present that to her. Okay. Come on up, Sophia. I'm not done. We're gonna do a quick picture when she gets up here. Okay. We'll do a quick picture. And then you can continue on with her. Do I have to do anything? Yeah. Yeah, you present. <laughs> Congratulations. We're going to step over here real quick and do okay. a picture. Get you in the middle of Alexa and I. And you can stay right here while Alexa finishes her presentation. Soph was injured in the spring of last year, and she had quite a rehabilitation journey, going from one athletic trainer to another and throwing PTs in the mix as well. It wasn't always easy, and she was pushed to her limits, but she attacked each challenge thrown at her with good energy and enthusiasm. Even as she approached the end of her rehab and full return to sport, Soph made sure to encourage those around her that were suffering from their own injuries and support those individuals as they as well as they were going through their rehabilitation journey. 
Her positive attitude, bright smile, welcoming heart, and unyielding dedication to her, com to her complete healing is exemplary and has become a welcome addition to the athletic training room. We are thrilled to see her return to soccer as we're going to miss her good vibes and constant smile in the athletic training room every single day. Thank you so for your big heart and dedication. We can't wait to see you back on the field in the fall where we know just as in life, you will excel beyond expectations. Congratulations, so we're so proud of you. And Alexa, being you're up here, just kind of got thrown at her the last minute, but also just wanted to say thank you as a senior and someone who went from being on a team to serving all of you. So this represents from all the students that you have helped with and done COVID toast testing and sideline work with. So thank you so much, Alexa. Good evening, my name is Nick Askew. I'm the Assistant Athletic Director for Communications and with me is our Assistant Sports Information Director, Kelsey Segrin. Kelsey joined the Athletic Communications staff this season and immediately elevated and improved what our office is able to do to tell the story of our 17 teams and over 200 student athletes in so many ways. Kelsey is also responsible for every video you've seen tonight and will see tonight. Please join me in thanking Kelsey for her incredible work. Each year, our office is uh, honored to select a recipient for the Legacy Award, given to a student athlete who, over the course of their career, has left a significant mark on Bushnell Athletics as a triathlete, first and foremost, and also through the lasting mark they will leave on the record book. That moment of the year that we just coincidentally played uh, was the perfect lead-in for this year's recipient, a woman who, with ice water in her veins on this very spot, hit those two free throws to send the OIT game into overtime. The woman who, in her 47th and final home game, scored 13 points between the fourth quarter and overtime to erase a 12-point deficit to help us pull off one of the most memorable wins this building has ever seen. Morgan may be the easiest choice we've ever had in the 16-year history of this award. She is quite simply Bushnell women's basketball's greatest of all time. Morgan finished her career this year with more single game, single season, and career records than I have time to list off. She's the first to ever hold career records for points, rebounds, and assists at the same time. She's won more games than any women's basketball player in school history, and that was before she had extra games this year in her fifth year for COVID. All told, she has 10 career records and ranks in the top five all time in 10 other career categories. She was a seven-time CCC Player of the Week, a five-time all-conference selection, earning first team honors in each of the last four years. Her junior year may go down as one of the best of all time when she helped guide the Beacons to our first ever women's basketball conference regular season and tournament championships, was named the CCC Player of the Year, and became women's basketball's first first team NAI All-American. On a personal note, Morgan, I want to thank you for the strength and grace with which you live an authentic life. As Corey said in the conversation we were just having before this meeting, you've opened a lot of eyes with the way that you live your life, how you compete, and how you've grown over the last five years. I've learned a lot from you, and I thank you as I continue to discover the best ways I can serve and support my own LGBTQ children. To David McKinney, let me just say, well, job, well done, sir. 
Thank you, you are a class act. Thank you for sharing your daughter with us for these last five years. Morgan, know that I will be your ally for life, and I know you will always be a friend. For that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I got through this without crying. Kelsey and I are thrilled to present this year's Legacy Award to Morgan McKinney. speech probably won't really use it now at this point with where I'm at emotionally um, I'm just so honored to be here um, because I just personally didn't think I would be here ever um, I sadly watched my sister go down a path of um, alcohol and drug abuse and homelessness and to be completely frank that's where I thought I was headed I had a 1.9 GPA in high school no counselor no teacher t told me that I was going to graduate and I just thought that I, I don't really know what I thought and my dad knows the story and not many people do but the biggest day of my life was graduating from high school because it changed my life and it propelled me to be here um, just a couple thank yous Nick and Kelsey I can't even begin to put into words um, Obviously, you guys are at every single game. Kelsey, thank you for being here the last couple of years. Nick, you've been with me from the get. Um, you opened me just open arms. I mean, um, thank you for um, embracing me as part of the LGBTQ community that some might not agree with. Um, and thank you for letting me be my authentic self. And I hope that I represent the community well for your children and for anyone else. Um, Corey and Sarah, we've been through, I mean, you guys, same thing from the get. Um, Sarah, the endless conversations in your office. Corey, the tears that we've shared over practices and games. Um, thank you both for giving me the opportunity to be a student here, a student athlete. And thank you for just letting me be me and trusting me with the name on my chest. Um, and th just, thank you. I can't ever say enough, so thank you. Um, Bree, Caitlin, Alexa, uh, Bree's not here, but um, I mean, these, you guys are just, I'm the biggest baby. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. So my feet hurt, my back still. I need some treatment soon, actually, probably. So you guys are amazing. I mean, like, you've taken care of me like no other. The amount of blood that they've had to get out of my jersey because I bite my fingernails like crazy. It's so gross. Um, <laughs> I think the habit will stop because the stress of basketball is kind of over. No, no, just kidding. But yeah, so thank you. You guys have endlessly always been there for me. I know that I can always rely on you, so thank you for everything that you guys have done. Um, I don't think he's here, but Peter Diffenderfer is a man um, that I really want to thank. Um, he's been a representation to our women's basketball program. Um, he's been nothing but kind to me. Um, his daughter is an amazing person, amazing runner. Our dad all of a sudden, our dads are besties. I don't know how that happened. Um, but they're besties. I don't know if he's here, but thank you for, your, for the endless service that you've given. Michael Fuller, I see you back there. 
you're the one that told me to come back and get my master's and you know I, I trusted you wholeheartedly with our conversation up in your office and I thank you um, for your honesty for your advice for your guidance um, you've been so good to me been so good to my dad I'm very appreciative and um, there's one woman here that I want to thank Wendy Alexander who is basically like my mom so we've been together the last five years and you've been there for me conversations the darkest parts of me the, the brightest parts of me welcomed me into your home fed me I mean you've done everything for me like a mother would do and you've represent and you've you've came to our games and you've been so supportive and you are you are my mother here you have blessed me um, with that. So thank you. I, I owe you that. Um, my teammates, thank you for scoring, catching the ball, rebounding, doing everything, trusting me. You guys have put up with so much of my stuff. Um, I'm tough. Um, as much as I love to lead, I know that at times I'm so hard on people sometimes and I can be harsh and I, I you know, so my team has, has been uh, so empathetic towards me, um, so honest with me and open with me and I thank every single one of you that aren't even here five years ago. Um, none of my accolades would be possible without each one of you, and I don't want to share them unless I'm sharing them with you. So thank you. Um, my coaches, Rusty and Kay and Emma, I'm not sure if you guys are here, but you guys are rock solid. Putting up with Chad. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, he, they're, they're amazing. Rusty's been here the longest out of anybody that I know, and um, he he deserves so much credit. Um, so much behind the scenes work, as with Kay and Emma um, and Chad. I mean, I feel like we've been through so much together. We've had ups and downs like no other. And we have not agreed, but you have given me the green light to be the best player that I ever was. And you're the best coach that I ever had. And you're a second dad to me. I trust you with my life wholeheartedly. And I trust you with this program going forward. And I know that it's in good hands. And so I thank you. Our bond is just endless. So, thank you. Um, and then I'll wrap it up right here because I take a long time. Um, my dad is my last thank you. Um, sitting right here. You know, we've been through so much, and it's not my legacy, it's ours. There's no doubt. I, uh, I just can't thank you. You adopted me. You gave me the best life that I could have ever asked for. And I'm so honored to be your daughter. And I'm so honored to share this award with you. And if you guys don't mind, I'd like my dad to stand and we give my dad a round of applause because that's the real legacy right here. Stand up. Well, I was crying, but I got through that pretty good, so we'll end it there. Um, as my last time being up here representing us, thank you for everything, and um, I hope number 34 lives on. That's all I hope, so thank you. Get ready for it. 
Get ready for it. Get ready for it. First of all, I did not think this through and I did not realize I had to follow Morgan. So, whew, thank you, Morgan. What you guys just saw on the screen is one of the moments of the year that many of you probably did not see. What our eSports program does in day in and day out is in an arena that you guys probably don't even know. You walk by it, you don't know the hours that they put in. So I wanna take a moment right now to thank our eSports student athletes, specifically, Christian Velasquez and David Solid, who took fourth place nationally in the Fortnite Championships. I don't know if you guys realize <laughs> they're our top achieving team this year. Um, fourth place nationally is a big deal. First place in the West. Last year, last year, last week, they were named the team of the year for esports, and Christian was named the MVP. So I just want to take a moment to thank our esports. And now we're gonna shift to academics. At Bushnell, our triathlete model is what we believe is the core of our athletic success. Our Christ-centered model that has three equal parts is what builds holistic student athletes and allows us to win and win the right way. Right now we're gonna talk about athletics. <laughs> athletics, I'm sorry, Morgan, you've killed me right here. Whew. We're gonna talk about academics. We believe that what is done in the classroom is just as important as what's done on the field, on the court, the course, and in the arena. We're very proud of the work that our students are doing in the classroom. We're the only school in the Cascade Collegiate Conference to get the President's Cup for Academic Excellence for the past six years running, and hopefully we'll get it again this year. I'll get your grades in the next couple weeks. This year, we started the Athletic Directors Hall of Fame. I'm sorry, honor roll. So we want to talk about the teams that are doing well. For the fall, this is from the fall, our women's cross country team had a 3.57 GPA. Women's golf had a 3.61. And volleyball was our top achieving team in the classroom with a 3.68. Thank you, women. Men, you got some work to do. I'd like to see your names on there. The next group of people that we want to thank is a high majority of our student athletes. When we look at the number of you that have over a 3.5 GPA, it's 101 of you, which is approximately 42% of our student athletes have over a 3.5 GPA. That's a big deal, so give yourselves a round of applause. We have 66 student athletes that have over a 3.75, and we have 32 students this fall that got a 4.0, which we now name our Distinguished Student Athletes, and we have our 4.0 club. So I would like those of you whose name is on this list, please stand up and be recognized as part of the 4.0 club. to again seeing your grades in a couple weeks so we can see more names on this list. If you have not received, we do have a certificate for everyone in our distinguished student athletes with a 4.0. We have them up here so you can get them after the program. Right now, I'm gonna have Nick ask you to do our Chi Alpha Sigma induction. Bushnell joined Chi Alpha Sigma, the National College Athlete Honor Society in 2012. Chi Alpha Sigma is our way of honoring the highest of achieving, highest of academic achievements by our student athletes. In order to qualify for membership in Chi Alpha Sigma, a student athlete must be at least a three-year athlete at Bushnell with a cumulative GPA of 3.8 or higher. Students have to be recommended by the chapter advisor, have the endorsement of his or her head coach, and, be, and display the qualities of a champion of character. 
Tonight, inductees are going to receive their official certificate, and then this coming Thursday at our honors convocation here in the chapel, they will receive a black and gold cord to be worn at commencement and a lapel pin. Today, we are inducting six members of Chi Alpha Sigma, and they are from women's, oh, when I read your name, come on up. Uh, women's soccer, Jamie Figueredo. From women's basketball, Alyssa Kuski. From men's golf, Alvaro Molina. From women's basketball, Brittany Ralston. From women's cross country, Isabel Weber. And from women's track and field, Maggie Wogenrich. Now I have the honor of talking about our Scholar Athletes of the Year. This year when we looked at our group of students, their athletic achievements and their academic achievements, we had a lot of students on the list. So we unapologetically decided to give out multiple female Scholar Athletes of the Year this year. I'm gonna start with our first one. This student athlete, I'll just let you know right now, it's volleyball and beach volleyball. Indoor, she was first team all CCC. She led the Beacons. She was fifth in the CCC with 3.36 kills per set. She had 316 kills, the most in nine years for us and the second most ever. For Beach, she was part of our number one pair all season. She's a COSIDA academic all district selection. In her academics here at Bushnell, she has a 3.95 GPA in psychology. Our first female scholar athlete of the year is Shay Coons. Our second female scholar athlete of the year is from women's cross country and track and field. This athlete was first team all CCC, fifth place finish at the CCC cross country national championships, NAI national cross country qualifier. She's a CCC track and field qualifier in the 1500 and the 10,000. She currently ranks number five in the CCC and the 10K. And she has a 4.0 GPA in psychology. Our next female Scholar Athlete of the Year is Rebecca Kuski. Our final female scholar athlete is from women's basketball. She's first team all CCC for the third year in a row. COSIDA academic all district selection. She's the leading scorer for the Beacons with 14.8 points per game. She ranked number five, she ranks number five on the Bushnell all time scoring list. We're excited for her to continue to move up. 
She also has a 4.0 in elementary education. Our final female scholar athlete of the year is Aspen Slifka. recipients the opportunity to speak tonight and I think maybe after Morgan nobody wants to say anything Mayor Morgan said it all now for our men's scholar athlete of the year unfortunately this individual could not be here today because he is in Medford for the CCC golf championships he is the top top golfer for Bushnell with a 74.7 stroke average three top 10 finishes he took third at the Walla Walla Invitational he shot a season best of 69 at Walla Walla. He has a 3.57 GPA in business administration. Our male scholar athlete of the year is Andrew Webb. So I want to start off by saying how humble I am to be receiving this award and thank all the athletic staff who thought I was worthy of receiving this award. Um, I can't be here to accept this. I'm at the conference championship currently for golf at Eagle Point, uh, but I wish I could be there with you all. And I'd also like to extend one more thank you to my, my family and my friends uh, who have been encouraging me in this whole process in college. Uh, it's, it's been a great journey and I've been very, very fortunate. So thank you. I'm so proud of this group and the work that they've done and the examples that they set for our beacons. We're excited to see what the future holds for them and we know it will be bright. And I'm excited to have future beacons on the stage with me next year and honoring all of you for the work that you're doing in the classroom. Sarah was just presenting uh, the academic side of our triathlete model. I'm here to talk about uh, the, the character side of our triathlete model. And that little video of um, Embrace the Community is just exactly that. I know today, matter of fact, our, our baseball team was out doing a canned food drive. So I know that I, we all appreciate you guys representing. I actually got a text from a neighbor saying that we just had some really nice baseball players collecting food. So thank you guys for that. Uh, this year has actually been limiting for what we've normally normally been able to do as an athletic department, uh, talking about a canned food drive, normally in the fall, we do a large athletic department canned food drive, but because of COVID, when at the beginning of things, we were limited to be to not be able to do that. And so I was happy to see that Embrace the Community Day still was, was that we were able to have uh, fulfillment through that, through our university and through all of our teams. And I know each individual team does things. And, and, and again, I know COVID's limited some of that, but next year, 22, 23, we will get back to what our normal is, which is being a very active participant in building not only um, building our community on campus, but also being a, a thriving part of our community and being and showing our strong character outside of our university community in, in Eugene and Springfield. With this, I would like to, let's see here, I think I've got, so our champions of character have all been nominated by our coaches. And so there is a list of our, of our, uh, student athletes there we go thank you so I'm gonna read off these names and as I read your name I want you to stand uh, and we can continue applauding. hey you're all athletes you know how to clap um, for men's track and field Jaron Carter and stay standing uh, baseball Kyle Kasperson 
men's cross country, Gabe Fatou. Men's soccer, Preston Ferry. Men's golf, Connor Maloney. Esports, Brett Olmstead. Men's basketball, Luke Smith. Women's basketball, Olivia Bailone. Women's soccer, Jamie Figueredo. Women's golf, Cassidy Krause. Volleyball and beach volleyball, Jessica Northcutt. Softball, Sam Silver. Women's track and field, Janae Uselman. Nice job. There we go. Women's bat. Oh, I'm sorry. Women's truck, track and field across country. Rebecca Kuski. <laughs> Thank you. I can't see anybody, so thanks for shouting that out. Um, at this time, I would like to bring Coach George Walcott up to present our one of our male champion of character athletes. Here for you. You present. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Oh, yeah. Thank you, CA. I think it was about 10 days ago I received an email from Sarah Freeman um, asking me if I could make this award tonight. Well, lights are bright. And um, I said yes without hesitation because this young man I'm about to present this evening. I've got so much respect for him. Over the past three years, I've watched him grow and mature into the awesome student athlete he's become. This young man is well respected by his teammates and coaches. He's a hard worker. He's dedicated. For us here at Bushnell, the triathlete model is very important to us when it comes to student athletes. We know this can be challenging, but this young man has embraced those challenges in terms of being a student athlete, in terms of pursuing uh, spiritual growth and development, academic growth and development, and athletic growth and development. This young man has a lot of character, a lot of moral principles. He's been raised well by his mom and his dad. And I've had the opportunity to be around him for the last three years now, and it's been a blessing. He did not come to us highly recruited out of high school. But I'm so happy that he opened my letter that I sent him. We started a conversation. He came and visited Bushnell, at the time NCU, and decided to, to attend school here. And it's just been awesome to watch the transformation of this young man. This young man only did track the last couple of years of high school. He had no idea how good he could be. But what he did was he applied himself. He committed himself to work hard. From a spiritual standpoint, He's involved with FCA, FCA Fellowship, Fellowship of Christian Athletes here on campus. He regularly attends chapel. He's our chapel representative for track. He's also our SAC captain and representative. So from a spiritual standpoint, he's applied himself to grow his relationship with the Lord. He's also a team devotional leader for a men's track group as well. Academically, this young man is going to graduate in three years because in high school, he paid attention to his academics. He took college courses that transferred into Bushnell, NCU at the time. And because of that, he has enough credits to graduate in three years. That's a tremendous amount of a, uh, commitment from a young man. Athletically, he is a school record holder in 100 meters, 
I think he's second all time. He was all conference last year in 100 meters and the four by one relay. Indoors, he's a school record holding 60 meter dash. He broke that record a few times during the, during the indoor season, as well as 100 meters outdoor and outdoor season as well. He became our first student athlete in the sprints to qualify for the national meet in the 60 meter dash. And I'm so proud of this young man because he's fully submitted himself to the things that we've asked him to do as a student athlete. He fits perfectly into our triathlete model. He's a great example for his teammates, but he's a very humble young man. And tonight, I want to present this award to none other than Jaron Carter. Come on up, Jaron. <laughs> JC, I know I've told you numerous times, like I've told many of the other kids, how much I love you. But I love and appreciate you, man. I love you, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's going to be tough to follow. My name is Eric Roscoe. I'm the men's uh, associate um, coach for, for men's soccer, and I'm here to present the other award for the Male Champions of Character Award. I knew three years ago now when we first saw this guy interact in the cafeteria in fall camp that this guy eventually was going to be a champion of character, genuinely. Um, I watched how he waited for all his teammates to finish eating dinner or lunch that day, and then what he did was something that no one's ever done before is he went back and talked to Jose or some of the cooks back there and asked for a wet rag and he started to to clean all of the tables what was even cooler about that was that it wasn't just a, a one-time thing it wasn't something that he did because the coaching staff was watching or anything like that but rather he did it all the fall camp and slowly but surely his teammates and his peers around him started to do that as well um, I know it was some of the women's soccer players and maybe even some of the volleyball girls and tra uh, cross country as well and so it started this thing of um, servantship. And that's been the theme across the time that I've known this, this gentleman. It's just he's been a big servant leader in the community, not only for us on the field and for his teammates, but also his peers. So I was really excited to, to finally have the, the ability to, to nominate him for this award tonight. I've gotten an opportunity to see how he's grown from this really shy, timid kid coming from the, from the island of Hawaii to a really prominent young man on campus who's a, who's a leader in very different ways from leading the uh, Pacific Island. Islander Club and also becoming a leader on our team and was voted captain last year by, by the coaching staff and some of his peers. Um, one of the things that I, that I love about this young man is that he's always willing to help, always willing to serve. He's the kind of guy that's going to open the door for you and keep it open even if you're on the other side of the quad. If he sees you running towards the door, he's going to keep it open for you, even if it's that awkward moment of just kind of waiting for you, you know, making sure the door doesn't close on you. Um, some, of the, some of the things that I think about about this gentleman is also he's an incredible hard worker the guy that's going to go home and, and work incredibly hard to come back prepared for the fall and I just wish I had some of that ounce of hard work in me when I was a player because I probably would have seen the field a lot more if I was just like him I aspire to be just like him when I grow up to have the high character that he is that he has and possesses and I truly believe that if the world had some of his servant heart and love for others like he does, then we, it would be a better world. So please help me in introducing and welcoming up this, this individual, the Champions of Character Award, Preston Ferry.
just kidding, you thought. Um, I was making a joke with my roommate and I before this, my roommate is Jaren if you don't know, that if we got our award that we would stand up here together and just look at everybody and just say thanks. But um, I figured that there's some ob obligatory congratulations to make. Um, first of all, as usual, like thank you, Corey, Sarah, faculty, staff, uh, athletic trainers, for helping us out and making sure that we're being cared for and that we don't just get injured and we can't play anymore. Um, thank you for all you guys here. I'm sorry, I don't know all of your names, especially you baseball guys. I'm sorry, you guys all look the same. <laughs> It's true, I'm sorry. I will try next year. Oh, I know your name, Fripp. I know you, buddy. Hey, man, oh, never mind, I'm not even gonna start. Um, I would also like to thank Coach Eric for helping us out um, these past three years and like, oh my goodness, okay, quick story. So when we were, when I first came in for fall camp, um, we were expected to clean up ourselves and um, nobody cleaned up so like you know you heard the story I cleaned up and um, the next day I think we forgot the balls that morning and so we were in this gym at 6 a.m. and our coach found out we didn't have balls and that nobody cleaned up after themselves after dinner that night so we had to run all morning for two hours straight it was fun you can laugh it's okay <laughs> Um, and then last thing or last person I would like to thank for raising me up this way, or I guess my parents, well, both of them, sorry, but specifically my mom. Um, the person you see today, I would like to say is because of my mom. She is such a wonderful person. For those of you who haven't met her, I hope you will be able to meet her sometime in the future. She is a wonderful person. She, um, and you can probably tell I'm a mama's boy, but. Um, she raised me to be who I am today and I am so grateful that she raised me to serve, to lead, to be humble and hardworking and to just be disciplined even if you aren't motivated to do something just put your head down to work and I hope I can continue to be disciplined, work hard, and to be able to serve all of you, regardless of who I am on campus. I don't really care about that. I just want to be able to serve and help you guys and also, you know, glorify God. So thank you guys again. Um, I appreciate this very much. Thank you, Coach Eric. Thank you, everybody. And yeah, thank you. Most of you have probably seen me around campus, but you don't recognize me without a hat on. So, so anyway, uh, it's my privilege to introduce this young lady that's played for us the last couple of years. I'm a softball coach or a co-softball coach along with Megan Kleiss. Um, her character speaks for itself. She's passionate about life. She's passionate about learning. She's passionate helping other people on and off the field. She manages and balances multiple jobs, plus her academics, athletic commitment, never fails to make time for those in the community and her peers. She serves as a leader on the softball team. She handles obstacles with grace. She recognizes goals that the team has set. Sam never fails to seek for feedback to improve her character and skills. And with... Uh, Excuse me. And this, she represents this award to the best is what it should be. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that Sam truly represents of this award and demonstrates her championship of character to the world each day and every day. Sam Silver. I did cry to 
of speech. I was told to prepare in the off chance I was chosen. Um, when I got the email that I was nominated for Champions of Character, I looked into it a little bit more and realized that there were specific words that we were chosen to represent. So I just kind of wrote about how I thought each of these words represented me or how I've been groomed to represent these words. The first one being respect. There are many people that I've learned elements of respect from this year and in years past. First, Coach Megan has taught me that there's so much more to the game of softball in life than I could ever have imagined. You have to respect the game for it to respect you. Coach Jim has taught me that it's okay to smile and it's okay to laugh and joke as long as I'm aware that there's a line of respect there that shouldn't be crossed. The list goes on of people I have learned from, but respect in all honesty is something I'm continuously working on. A little bit of advice for any captains or coaches, just because you're placed in a leadership role, it does not mean you have earned respect from those around you. Congrats on the role, but now you have to lead by example and prove that there's a reason you have chosen to be in that role. Integrity. I think at our age and even as we get older, integrity is sometimes a tough pill to swallow. Sometimes you're put in an uncomfortable position where it comes down to a right or wrong choice. Sometimes you don't know which choice is right until that choice has already been made. I think this is where our faith can be of some help. If your faith is strong, God will help you make the right choice and choose, and he will help you be honest no matter what. Responsibility. This is a big one to me. Responsibility can show up in many ways. Sometimes it feels like it's too much for us to handle, but it turns out God doesn't give us more than we can handle. For the sake of this award, I think responsibility goes further than just being on the field. I think it goes out, out into the classroom and to what we do outside of the classroom. Being responsible is not only being responsible of your schedule, but of also those people that you support and the people that you're supposed to guide around you. Servant leadership. I believe that this is supposed to be done behind the scenes. I don't need to list off everything I do to every, for every single one of my teammates. I don't need to tell them that, hey, I went up to this person and I went up to this person. I don't need to give them a list of what I've done that day. The point is to serve. Whether that be treating them to coffee, taking the time to listen, or just making sure I answer when they call. A leader takes care of those around them, but the important thing to remember is that the accolades are not the reason that we do what we do. It's because we truly love those who are around us and we want to support them to the best of our abilities. Sportsmanship. This is one, I'll be honest, I've learned a little bit about this year. For many of you that know me, coaches, teammates, and other players on different teams in this room, you know that I play with an all-consuming fire. I've been described as someone who will run through a brick wall to catch a ball, but this is who I am. And throughout this year, I've had a moment, or few, where I've had to learn that I have to rein in my fire sometimes. Specifically, when it comes to umpires or officials. This is gonna bring me full circle back to respect. That is something the officials deserve as well. I know that all of us have had opportunities or moments where we've gotten frustrated in a game and you kind of just want to clear the bench a couple times. But I've learned that as a leader, I made a promise to myself and to my team that I'm supposed to stand strong and create the calm environment that we need when things aren't necessarily going our way. I'm supposed to be encouraging to my team because in all reality, I know and I believe that no matter what my team faces and no matter what calls get made, we can push through and win, no matter what, they what they're trying to decide the game to be. Thank you for choosing me for this award. I feel honored and blessed. I'm thankful for everyone who shaped me into who I am and who I will continue to be pushed to be. I look forward to this next year and being able to use this award to only further strengthen the abilities that I've been given by God and also the abilities that have been shaped by my coaches, my teammates, and my family. I look forward to the next step in whatever God has in my journey, and I look forward to learning more about what it means to be a true champion of character. Thank you.
from that video is that it was 99 degrees and they were melting. So beach volleyball, your persistence and perseverance, good job. It's an example for all of us. Now I get to talk about our Hall of Fame. Earlier today, we got to have our Hall of Fame induction, where we got to celebrate 50, the 50th anniversary of the passing of Title IX. We got to celebrate our rich history at Bushnell in women's athletics, and we got to celebrate our induction class, which is an all-female class for the first time. We inducted our 1975 volleyball team, who went undefeated and won a championship that year. We inducted our 2011 women's cross-country team, which is the first team in our NAI history to qualify for nationals. And we inducted Dr. Heike McNeil, who I'm going to have come up right now. And she's going to have a few words for you guys. It was such an honor to be here to listen to the stories from the past. And I think that that's important. We have a coaching class. And this last week, we had Mike Peterson, who is a trustee, who is an alum. He's in our Hall of Fame. And he told our student athletes at one point, if you have the opportunity to go to a Hall of Fame event, do that. So I add that as a welcome to you guys in the years to come. Please join us for our Hall of Fame. It's so good for you guys to hear the stories from the past, to see what it is that you guys get to do and the shoulders that you're standing on. And for this year, there are amazing women in our history at Bushnell. Most of the first that we have had have been women. Our first national championship team was a woman's team. Our first individual national champion was a woman. There's so many things that women in athletics have done, and our conference in Bushnell celebrate women in athletics. <clears throat> so I want to bring up Dr. Heike McNeil, our 2022 individual inductee into the Hall of Fame. Welcome. Um, again, as Sarah said and introduced me, I'm Heike McNeil, and um, I'm really honored that um, I was chosen to be inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. And as an encouragement, I feel like I'm going to reiterate what Sarah said and Corey said earlier today. Um, you guys. It's a privilege to be a part of a team. It's a privilege to be a part of a team anywhere, but especially at a small place like this and at a special place like this. And today, as my athletes from over 10 years ago all met together here and earlier for breakfast, we all realized um, just how much bonding we did then. And I said earlier how much we, we laughed together and cried together. And I think Morgan captured that beautifully in her speech as well. There, there's so much relationship building and so much that goes on and happens when you are part of a team and you have that common goal and you work towards that and you are out there and you're giving the best that you can every day. Look around you. Maybe you disagree with your coach today. Maybe you got in a fight with one of your teammates. But in 10 or so years from now, when you guys meet together, what's going to be important is to remember the things that united you. And those were the hard work you guys put in together. Your love for Christ, your love for each other, the way you encouraged each other. I hope you remember that as you leave here. Thanks.
The last thing I want to say about the Hall of Fame is that um, we had chocolate and, uh, bars that we have in the back. So please, before you leave, they um, have celebration of Title IX, the passing of Title IX, and our rich history of women's athletics. So please take those. If you want to take two or three, take as many as you would like. And now, I would like to introduce our head volleyball coach, Jason Corwin, who he is going to introduce our Athlete of the Year. Sarah. Thank you, Athletic Administration, for allowing me to introduce the Bushnell Athlete of the Year Award. As I thought about um, saying a few words about this honor, uh, I wanted to think about what makes this person so worthy of this award. Words like character, skill, performance, leadership came to mind. <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask this person to come up now. Um, and then I'm going to say a few words on our way up, but McKenna Northern. <laughs> now she comes up, a few words and a few stories, which is why it's going to be kind of nice to have her up here. You're welcome. Okay? Yeah. Um, you know, if we had one word to describe McKenna, it would be a competitor. If we had two words, we'd say she's a fierce competitor. We have a great story about this. So her first year, um, we were worried about the consistent performance through the sets. It felt like it was kind of lagging a little bit. And uh, we're we thought basically you were hypoglycemic <laughs> and low blood sugar. And uh, we were talking to the trainers and we were trying to come up with all these solutions to help her get through this process. Um, I'd like to say it was just over a weekend, but it wasn't. It was like a year and a half of us trying to problem solve this. And we got the trainers involved. Um, we had frosting on the bench for her. She would eat frosting uh, around set three. Is that about? Okay. Yeah. We uh, discovered that vanilla frosting is her favorite. Uh, between one of the sets, she's sitting down on the bench, her hands eating frosting. Jackie walks by and she goes, hey, you want some? Jackie said no. She finally came to us about a year and a half later. She goes, hey, coach, I think I figured this out. I'm like, that'd be great because we don't have any more solutions, options. Okay? And she said, I think I'm just celebrating too hard. And she was. I said, well, do you think you could kind of tone it down at the beginning and just save all that energy at the end and really celebrate when we win? She goes, yeah. That was the solution. Year and a half because she was celebrating too hard at the beginning of the match. If you see the pictures of McKenna online and you see the highlights, you can see how intense she is when she competes. Whenever we come to McKenna about maybe changing a role for whatever reason or doing something different that requires her to sacrifice, her response is always, whatever the team needs, whatever I can do to help the team win. And that's not just for me, but it's for Kim as well, because she plays on the beach team. She said, whatever the team needs, let's do it. She'll fill whatever role is necessary. She's currently student teaching. She's teaching middle schoolers math. Okay? I'm a, I'm a middle school teacher, so I know. All right? And you can ask her stories later. Her uh, cooperating teacher is on maternity leave, and they can't find a replacement for her because if you guys don't know, there's a teacher shortage. Okay? And uh, so McKenna's just teaching a class. Now, if you know middle schoolers, the sharks are circling. Okay? And uh, they didn't know what hit them, though, because it's McKenna. 
she has stories, make sure she tells them to you. McKenna's a problem solver. McKenna doesn't hope for success, she prepares for it. She grows her skills, she finds a way to win, she wills her team to victory. She serves her community, she serves her team. I remember Sydney, our incoming setter, almost after every practice and set coming up to McKenna and asking why and when, because he's the same position group. And McKenna's obviously very patient and explains everything. She's a resource. She's coached both indoor teams and beach teams uh, for the local youth programs. And my personal thanks, she's always available for recruiting. She makes the phone calls, shares the meals, available to be in the gym for us to evaluate recruits. This is an incredibly important aspect to recruiting for me, so thank you. Now I get to talk about the performance, accomplishments, your journey that's unfinished, so we have another year, because she's not gonna talk about those things, okay? First of all, um, you stood up because you got a four point? Yeah. Oh, GPA? Yeah. Okay, so, I mean, yeah. I had to pencil this story in, okay? Because if she's standing up for this, 4.0 GPA. We're on our first road trip and I'm, I tell the team, or I'm checking in with the team, just like, hey, how's, how are classes going? And McKenna tells me, hey, this is going, this is going fine. And I go, well, what? you know, I don't know McKenna yet. And I go, well, what does that mean? And she goes, hey, don't worry about it, coach. C's get degrees. <laughs> I'm like, ah, hold on a second. <laughs> um, and so, thankfully, she was joking, right? I was. Yeah, okay. Totally. So, congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Um, she's also the Cascade Conference Setter of the Year. First team, several years. NAL American Honorable Mention. ABCA All Region Team. Ten and a half assists per set. She's number one for Bushnell in assists. And if you'll indulge me just a little bit, she hasn't set all six rotations for all the time that she's been here. The first year we asked her to hit, because remember, it's all about the team. And so she hit. She set for three rotations. The next year she set all six rotations. And then we had a COVID year, and we had half a season. And then this last year, you set all six rotations. And she's still the leader at 3,226. She's Cal Pack Beach Honorable Mention in our first season. And for our team awards, because nothing happens in a vacuum, but she's a big part of this. She's been a part of most wins in school history, highest finished in conference, farthest in CCC playoffs, and our first two banners up on the wall for our NAI appearances. These are some of the examples of what McKenna brings to this team, this university, and her community. She has demonstrated the character, skill, performance, and leadership to be recognized for this award. Without further delay, it's my privilege to present McKenna Northern, the Bushnell University Athlete of the Year. so incredibly blessed to receive this award the last two years. Um, the, this program has come a f really far away since I was a freshman. Uh, we tied for 10th in conference my freshman year. We were not that great. But uh, with the help of Jason and the, all of the amazing recruits that he got, um, we have done a lot of firsts for the program. Um, this year and last year we did our first uh, national appearance. We finished highest in, uh, that we ever have in conference. Um, we also, I'm guessing they'll show the clip later, but we also beat uh, Corbin in three. So <laughs> that was awesome. Um, but all of these things could not have been done without these people. Uh, Corey and Sarah, without you guys, none of what we do would be possible. Scheduling games, making sure everything's run smoothly, um, that can't be the easiest thing. Uh, and then also coming to support whenever you can. You guys are always at Corbin. Uh, Sarah went down to California with us, which was awesome. Um, you guys are some of our biggest fans and we really appreciate you. 
Uh, Nick and Kelsey, uh, I think that we can agree that we have the best uh, after game write ups out of anyone in the conference. I've read other people's and they are the best. So thank you. We really appreciate all you do setting up for games. Uh, you guys make uh, the game so much better and the write ups afterwards are awesome. So thank you. Uh, Brie and Caitlin, um, I'm not down there a lot, but I know a bunch of uh, our team is down there, and we appreciate you guys for keeping us together and working, <laughs> because a lot of us are down there. Um, I also wanted to thank the student section this year. You guys were awesome. I don't, I don't know specifically who was in it, but we had uh, people come all the way up to Montana when we made it to nationals. You guys were awesome this year. It's the best student section that we've had since I've been here in four years. So you guys are awesome. Um, and then I specifically want to thank my parents and siblings. Um, you guys are at every game possible rooting us on. Uh, they go to, they went to Montana, they go to the Idaho games, they go to the Eastern Oregon games. Um, who I am today is because of you guys, and I am so appreciative for all you've done for me. I also want to thank Jason, Kim, Marley, and Elton. Um, <laughs> you put so much faith in me on the court um, to run our offense and run it well. It has really helped me blossom into a better player and teammate. You guys made the decision to easy to come back for a fifth year, and I can't wait to have one more year with you guys in this team. You worked so hard to get good recruits and make this program better, and I'm so thankful for everything that you guys do for us. And finally, I want to thank my team. This award is a reflection on all of us. We are awesome. Um, <laughs> this team is my family, and I can't wait to spend one more year with you guys. Thank you. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. This is it. Access to Ridgeway on the left side. We'll get there, pops it up. Three ball over. Last. Troutman. Cohen pushes left side. Ridgeway off the block. Last. And it's blocked. The Beacon Bill Goff, number six, Corbin. Tonight we get to give this out. My name is Michael Fuller and I serve as your Vice President for Enrollment and Student Development um, here on campus. And uh, tonight has been amazing. I've been impressed and it's been fun uh, to just watch and celebrate each of you. We're really, really proud of you. We know the last 26 months have been insane. And I think it says so much about each of you, how you've stuck through it, uh, those of you who've been here the whole time, those that came to school and found a school and decided to not give up um, on your passion. Um, that's a big, big deal uh, that you have gotten this far today. So we do celebrate you tonight, and uh, uh, it's an honor um, to do so. Before we give out the cup, I just want to say two things. The first is that leadership is hard. Um, Sam, your talk was awesome, by the way. Um, and I love what you said about how um, being named a leader is one thing, a title, um, but you earn it after you were named it. And, and that's what happened. And uh, I love, 
I love our staff. I love our athletic admission administration team. I get to, to live vicariously through them. I watch the, the amount of time that they work. And I think tonight uh, folks have done a really good job kind of acknowledging uh, different groups there. Um, but I'm going to take a moment because uh, I can to celebrate someone in particular, and I just want to lift him up. So for 16 years, uh, Bushnell's had an athletic director that um, has been the epitome of uh, lead by example. He's the epitome of the triathlete model. He's the epitome of champion of character. And part of it is because he's, he's willing to consistently do it. If the floor needs mops, he does it. If we need to go figure out a way to come up with a couple thousand bucks to do something, he'll do it. Um, but the last 26 months have been insane. Um, I, I, I am across the hallway from Corey, eight yards away, and the amount of time he has spent on things that he hates to do would blow you all away. All this COVID crap has involved thousands of hours of phone calls, organization, the stuff that has nothing to do with why any of us do what we do, except we care more about you than we do the crud. So we did everything possible we could do to keep this school open and physically open and keep you doing what you do to fill you up. So I want to take a moment to celebrate your athletic director who led his team and all of you through this. Can you please join me in just thanking Corey? Thank you all for helping me do that, and the fact that he didn't want it is even the more reason that we did it. So, Corey, we love you. Um, so along with leadership being hard, the second group I want to take just a moment to acknowledge is those of you that are about to graduate. Something really special is going to happen in two weeks on this stage, and we're going to celebrate you again as you walk across the stage at graduation. And uh, I heard this last week uh, from a candidate we were interviewing for a position, and it just stuck with me. And I've been thinking about it ever since about how it represents our students that each of you get to use your sport to make college more memorable each of you get to use your sport to make college more memorable you wear that logo on your chests or your emblems, how you represent us and all that we do. But at the end of the day, your college experience is so more rich uh, because you guys have chosen to spend, you know, on average an extra six hours a day uh, doing something that really is the equivalent of a full-time job uh, to represent our university and to do it so well. So for those, all of you, I thank you. But I do want to just take that special moment for our soon-to-be graduates. You will be beacons for life. Um, we own that. We want you to own that. Um, once a beacon, always a beacon, and we are proud of you. So uh, congratulations, graduates, and we will, uh, we're will we ready to high-five you and cheer you on uh, as you get your diplomas. Yeah, thank you. So the Dr. Heike McNeil Cup of 2022. Um, this is special. This award is named in honor of Dr. McNeil, who, who was up here earlier today. Um, Heike is a member of our Bushnell Athletic Hall of Fame, a current professor of exercise science or kinesiology, our faculty athletic rep, and our former cross country and track coach. Um, during Coach McNeil's tenure as a head coach, she led us to nine NAI track and cross country national appearances three Cascade Conference Championships, and was the three-time Cascade Collegiate Coach of the Year. She was also the NAI National Coach of the Year and was the coach of our national championship team. That up there, that red thing in the back that's awesome, that's all Heike and her team. Um, so this award means something special. That's why we named it after her. So the team that we're about to call forward, um, you are very, very special too. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about them, okay? 
This year was obviously a year like no other, um, and this team thrived in very big and specific ways. This team achieved an overall record of 21 and 8. They were 16 and 6 in the conference and had a school record for wins with 21. They hosted a Cascade Collegiate playoff game for the first time and consequently beat Northwest 3-0. They upset number six ranked Corbin, as we just saw at home in three straight sets. And let's be honest, there's really not a lot better in life than beating Corbin. So I'm just gonna own that right there. They qualified for NAI National Championships for the second straight year, and they had four all Cascade Collegiate Conference selections, the conference setter and libero of the year, and an overall team GPA of 365 this fall, which was the best of all Bushnell teams. Please join me in congratulating your volleyball team for winning the Team of the Year Award. Come forward, volleyball. said thanks to administration thanks to our coaches for getting us here and um, letting us accomplish all of these great things and yeah thanks to our whole school for supporting us and recognizing us for this we're now going to celebrate our seniors and as he said we we truly thank you for investing your lives in us letting us invest in you guys we hope your time at Bushnell has been rewarding and we truly hope you'll be beacons for life as I read your names you're going to come up this side of the stage and receive your your framed chenille and then proceed down and we're going to line up across the front of the stage when I'm done reading everyone's names we'll have you back up on the stage because the lighting's better up here than down there so I can get a big group photo of everybody First from men's soccer, Esger Avila. From eSports, Tyler Chase. From men's soccer, Arjuna Shotu. From eSports, Preston Clark. From women's soccer, Jamie Figueredo. From women's basketball, Ari Fusilier. From women's golf, not here, Fernanda Gardia. From esports, Jacob Gates. From volleyball and beach volleyball, Camille Guerrero. From track and field, Karina Haas. From baseball, Abbott Hafar. From volleyball, Jackie Harmon. From men's soccer, Julian Hernandez. From softball, Brady Johnson. From men's soccer and track and field, Joel Kambu. 
from women's golf, golfing, Cassidy Kraus. From women's basketball, Alyssa Kuski. From softball, Jordan Kuykendall. From men's golf, Connor Maloney. From men's basketball, Eric Marbley Jr. From women's basketball, Morgan McKinney. From softball and women's soccer, Annabelle Mendez. From men's golf, Alvaro Molina. From men's soccer, Raul Ochoa. From volleyball and beach volleyball, Olivia Peck. From men's golf, Cole Radburn. From women's basketball, Brittany Ralston. From track and field and volleyball, Michaela Rodriguez. From track and field and esports, Brevin Rusnagel. From volleyball and basketball, Claire Solness. From men's basketball, Logan Sand. From men's golf, Andrew Webb. From cross country and track, Isabel Weber. From women's soccer, Amanda Wetton. From track and field, Nathan Wirth. From track and field, Maggie Wogenrich. From men's basketball, Nico Wolf. And from men's basketball, Dylan Young. Okay. Come on back up. And I'll go get the camera. Before, as a matter of fact, uh, Preston, come on up. Preston is going to close us out. Is Preston still here? There he is. Good hustle. Hey, before uh, Preston uh, prays us out, I definitely have some thank yous for for my team. Um, our associate athletic director, Sarah Freeman, please stand. 
Nick Askew, Assistant Athletic Director for Communications. Kelsey Segrin, our Assistant Sports Information Director. And then Wendy Alexander, our Athletic Office Manager. Also a shout out to her husband, Eddie, also our men's basketball coach, for his helping get this thing set up tonight. Hey, but without, without my team, this doesn't happen very well. Th th this group, great leaders, they keep me on task. Matter of fact, they tell me what to do, which is even better. So I just want to thank them. And make sure you guys thank them as we're leaving out of here today. So uh, please do that. Also, I feel like there's another announcement. Da -da 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 -da. Before I bring Preston up, is there, am I forgetting anything? Hey, this is going to be a little weird, but I'm trying to save time for another group that needs to come in here tomorrow morning. Hey, let's kind of pretend this is chapel, okay? In the back are the racks. I'm not saying everybody needs help. I know Preston will. So let's try to get chairs up on the racks, but they're all squished back there. Not in a big hurry to leave. There is a lot of treats in the back of the room that Wendy baked all night, putting all that stuff together and making magical punch back there is really good. So make sure you gra guys grab that. Also, as Sarah was saying, the, the chocolate chocolate bars, Willy Wonka prepared those, so please take those. We don't want all the calories left in the room because there's a few of us that will eat them. So take that stuff back to your roommate or wherever you live. So Preston, come on up, pray us out of here. Thank you guys very much. I know we've still got some spring sports going. We got golf tomorrow down in Medford at Conference Championships. We got big games this week with softball at Corbin. Maybe it'll be here depending on the weather. Uh, I know uh, baseball, we got a home game with Linfield on Tuesday. Tuesday, and then heading down to OI, no, you guys are heading over to LC, and softball is heading, well, we play these games with Corbin, and then you guys are heading down to OIT. Track, I know we've got meets coming up and our conference championships and nationals as we qualify, so there's a lot of, a lot of activity. So with that, Preston, bring us out of here the way the good Lord wants us to. Amen. No pressure. <laughs> All right. Uh, please bow your heads, close your eyes. Definitely follow the Lord. Thank Thank you for this time. Thank you for allowing us to gather here and just be able to celebrate all these people and thank all the people who make this possible. I just pray that as we leave this place that we would be able to go about our lives and continue to work hard and just serve and serve you. Uh, pray that everybody here who goes to a Christian university would clean up afterwards and pray these things in your son's most precious name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Get out of here.